Thank you for attending the 2021 Runaway and Homeless Youth National Grantee Training. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Sanzana Dean, Director of the Division of Runaway and Homeless Youth for the Family and Youth Services Bureau. Good afternoon, RHY community. I'm Dr. Sanzana Dean, Director for the Division of Runaway and Homeless Youth here in Fisby. And I have to say that I am so proud to say that this has been an amazing training. In case you had noticed, this training has brought together over 1,000 of the most engaged and passionate professionals in the youth services field. We all came together for three days, heard two fabulous keynote speeches, and participated in sessions that covered a wide range of topics, highlighting the most promising practices for serving runaway and homeless youth. I thank you all for your time and energy, your passion, your experience, and your expertise. We appreciate everything that you brought to our training this year and all of the amazing work that you do for young people experiencing homelessness in your communities. As we wrap up our time together, we now begin the important next step to process and reflect on all the new information gained and the connections made and really being thoughtful about how to translate this new knowledge and energy into new resources and strategies that benefit the youth and communities that you serve. As we begin to reflect on what we learned over the last few days, I wanna challenge you all to be open. Be open to new ways of thinking, new ways of engaging, and new ways of doing all the hard things we talked about here whether it be creating space that allows young people to genuinely contribute to building better programs and resources, to exploring the impact of racial equity in delivering high quality programs, being open and inclusive to all youth and families who seek support through your programs. And of course, as you'll hear from Dr. Joy, ensuring that we love and care for ourselves as we care for and serve others. You know, we've heard a lot about youth partnership this week. Some of our sessions were designed and led by young people and young leaders from around the country who are truly passionate and committed to ending youth homelessness. So one hard thing that I wanna challenge you to engage in is authentic youth partnership. At the most basic level, we need to listen to young people, their experiences and their needs for individualized supports. The Pathways theme to our event this year suggests that each youth and young adult is on an individual journey that is defined by who they are and are impacted by all the people that they've come across throughout their journey. As we've learned through listening to young people, we know that the journey can be quite hampered or supported based upon how programs interact with young people and recognize their strengths, needs, hopes, dreams and desires. To learn what they're going through and to give them the right supports in the right ways and at the right time requires that we also listen, but ask them and create spaces which, in which individuals can be authors of their own personal development story. We must commit our organizations and services to regularly incorporate youth feedback into our case management our development plans, and to individualize the supports based on how a young person presents to us. We must remember that it is the individual young person who has taken this journey, not us. We've already had our journey, and they should also be leading their own journeys. And so we need to go a little bit further by creating spaces for young people to shape our programs and make decisions about your, lo your local youth homelessness systems because we know without their knowledge of how the systems function, where the barriers are, what solutions are likely to work, and what young people are concerned about and need most, um, and how best to communicate to their peers, that if we don't consider these things and take their feedback and experiences into consideration, we will never be able to design and implement solutions that meet the needs of young people, acknowledging the realities and the various ecosystems that they're navigating. For example, at the national level and in partnership with federal government agencies, we're doing our best to model authentic youth partnership 
through RITAC's Action for Impact Team and the NRS Youth Advisory Board, and through other federal efforts in collaboration with the Youth Catalyst Team and other youth leadership groups. At the local level, I know that there are more action boards than ever before at both the individual program and community levels. You've heard from many of these amazing young people and the groups that they represent this week and how they build partnership with young adults and adults to be able to set policy, build strategy, and influence decision-making in local communities. And so I'm also challenging you, challenging you to move beyond asking yourselves, why should we include young people in this process to how we can include young people in the process. Listening to and allowing young people to lead their own story and partnering with them in decision-making requires that we also name and confront what we've all heard or called adultism. For example, many of us grew up in a world of our parents or grandparents telling us, you'll understand when you're older, or perhaps that children are meant to be, and young people are meant to be um, seen and not heard. And as we've heard, in many ways this week, this mentality does not work for our young people or for improving our community's outcomes. If we're honoring our positive youth development principles, we're pursuing practices that build trust and genuine partnerships with young people, and we're working towards meaningful programmatic change. And so the second area that I want to challenge you to engage in is community partnerships. At the beginning of the training, Acting Associate Commissioner Powell talked about the importance of partnership for individual young people and for your programs, youth homelessness systems, and Dr. Punch offered his own heroic journey towards building powerful partnerships between systems of health, homelessness, justice, and community organizing in St. Louis. Many of our sessions have reinforced for me the importance of community partnership in providing young people the options they need to create their own individual journeys. Options that cross sectors that are flexible, fluid, and adaptable with as few barriers as possible. It is our job to build strong relationships that include formal connections with warm, seamless transitions to build, to elevate, and really to illuminate barrier-free pathways. <clears throat> it's our job to create enough pathways to represent their homelessness experience and memberships and groups and to meet them where they are in education, employment, and housing. I'm also challenging you to break through silos, really to engage in partners um, that see themselves in the work, that have an opportunity to build upon and share your values, and sometimes to share power, and sometimes we know how hard that can be, so that our communities of partnership, build alliances and resources that can truly prevent um, and end youth homelessness. And the last challenge I want to offer is about equity. You've heard a lot about the disparate impact of homelessness that it has on Black, Hispanic, Indigenous, and other youth of color, and the disparate impact it has on youth who are LGBTQ+. Thanks to several important research initiatives over the last 10 years and RHY program data, as well as various community needs assessments from around the country, we truly understand clearly that these young people experience homelessness more frequently and more severely than their peers. And in many communities across the country, resources like transitional living programs and permanent housing is not reflective of the number of young people who you see through your street outreach programs, who represent and present to you for support at your drop-in centers, and who show up at your community shelters. We also know that in organizations, in our systems, it matters that rich cultural diversity among staff who will lead to different policies and decisions is important. A different environment for our young people and to offer a model for them um, for what they might be and what healthy community relationships look like. And really that speaks to the opportunity for young people to see themselves in opportunities of, of leadership, um, of success, depending on where they are in their pathway and where they um, are going to be able to have um, true examples within the organizations that serve them um, 
to see growth as well as, as leadership um, in their own um, dreams and, and realities. But one of the things kind of to keep in mind is that our systems and organizations, particularly at the leadership level, don't often reflect this diversity and this equity or inclusion that we aspire for young people or that young people value. I know that ensuring equity can sometimes be hard. It challenges deeply held and often hidden community and cultural beliefs and practices. And we know that it won't be addressed by a single event or training, nor is a single staff hire going to turn inequitable systems into equitable ones. So my challenge to you, nonetheless, is to commit to working on these things. So instead of a two, four, or six hour training, think about engaging your organization, your community in a six or 12 month learning and action initiative that not only includes equity education, but also the development of an equity action plan. Consider implementing supportive practices for staff and young people, like support groups, and take steps to demystify or destigmatize the conversation about race and language and ethnicity related to racism. You might also consider conducting a staff audit to make visible how representation in your system or your program is, including staff on the front lines and in leadership. Now, let me be clear that this indeed is a call to action. What I'm asking, what we are asking you to do is the hard things, the hard things of engaging in authentic youth partnership, building a robust community partnership, and to begin to untangle the complex issues related to equity. We hope that you'll take what you've learned this week, along with the new and strengthened friendships and connections that you've made, and really walk the next few steps along the pathway with young people that will lead to these things. At FISB, please know that we're here to support you along the journey, and we know that you can do it. And we thank you for all of your incredible partnership. I am personally inspired by your courage your resilience and your dedication. I want to offer thank you to Youth Collaboratory um, who supports us each and every day in our grantees um, and all of our contractors and federal partners that support um, RHY um, have really made this training this year a wonderful success. In addition, I also would be remiss if I did not offer thanks to my own amazing RHY team um, for their tireless efforts on behalf of the RHY community and to Acting Associate Commissioner Powell for her vision and her continued passion and all that we do on behalf of runaway and homeless youth. We have truly enjoyed our time with you together um, from the workshops, the networking, um, the federal session, and look forward to opportunities to continue to get, engage with you throughout the year. And again, I want to say thank you and we'll pause um, real briefly. And then I wanna talk about um, our artistic expression that we have. And so um, we did have several opportunities to um, receive um, artistic expressions from young people. And so I don't wanna end our training um, without speaking with them, speaking about them um, on a high note, because by recognizing the wonderful work submitted um, for this year's artistic inspection, is really um, a testament to what you do and how you serve young people and how they see themselves on the journey of their own pathways. So each year, FISB hosts an opportunity for artistic expression in which we invite young people and young adults to express their authentic voice, passion, and interests and experiences. This year, we're delighted to receive creative expressions from several youth uh, related to the theme, Brighter Futures, Strengthening Pathways for Youth Success. Hopefully you've had an opportunity um, to, to view them in the expo space during the training. Um, and I'd like to take a moment to really highlight um, each contribution at this year's National Grantees Training. Next slide, please. First, we'd like to thank the Hawaii Youth Services Network for their help in engaging and submitting the video Kiki to Kapuna, this is our way. In this video, Ikeka Kahui, a 17-year-old with hearing, speech, and other disabilities, 
has shared why he and his parents chose to be vaccinated for COVID-19 and how they felt afterwards. Next slide. Here, you see Thea Parrish's original artwork, Look to the Future, which depicts someone stuck in the past and reaching through to the future. Thea shared, the colors in the picture signify imagination, which also helps to fuel the goals you have in mind for the future. Thank you to Thea for sharing her work and inspiring us to aspire to a brighter future. Next slide. Here in the collage titled, We All Belong, a group of young people came together to create a display that calls us to deep reflection. Jay, Brandon, Ori, Sky, and Damon ask, do you know how we got here? And do you really see us? In their beautiful collage of imperfect paper pieces, they share the message of, we have hopes and dreams for our future. We are capable of loving and caring like everyone else. We are alike and different. We matter and we belong and our futures are colorful and bright. Next slide. The next two were shared with us thanks to Larkin Street Youth Services and their Creative Lab Learning Center. This is an intensive training in the arts and entrepreneurship with a focus on applying art skills to working in the field. The first video is by creator Terrell Couch sharing about art, self-expression, creativity, and making changes, including a move across the country. Next slide, please. On our final video is from a youth artist, Mariah Dixon. Mariah is a self-taught artist who has dedicated 10 years to practicing art as self-empowerment. Wow. In her video, we hear about what creativity and feminine energy look like in her life. On behalf of Fizzy, Fizby, I want to express my appreciation for each of the youth and young adults who share their artistic expressions with us this week. I know that this experience is richer for including their perspectives. I'd also like to thank the RHY grantees and providers who supported these youth in making submissions to this year's display. Thank you for your work connecting all of the training attendees to these experiences. We will now show um, clips of each of our video submissions. Aloha. Aloha. We are the Anui Ohana. And we live on the windward side of Oahu. And we are fully vaccinated. I was the first one to get the vaccine in March. I got mine second in April. And I am the third one to get one in May. I got the Pfizer tape because I was 17 years old. From what we've learned about the vaccine, it's safe and effective with minimal side effects and it's available to a wide range of people. Living with a keiki with a disability and a husband who's considered kapuna, I got my vaccine to protect them. I got the vaccine basically because I do not want to die. And as well as my family. I didn't want them to die. We first got the vaccine because I want to stay healthy and go back to school. Well, if the majority of people are vaccinated, Hopefully we can have some semblance of normalcy of us going to the store, the theater, uh, like it was before the pandemic. I feel great. I feel I've helped my family as well as the community. I feel great. No major mm -hmm. side effects and I feel like I'm part of the solution. I feel like a new person and I feel safer on others. Who are you? Well, um, my name is Terrell. 
Who am I? I feel like that question is complex. I feel like we as people, we are more than one person. Being that our spirit and physical bodies are two different entities and two different, you know, whatever you want to call it. I feel like who we are, who am I is complex. And with that understanding, I know that I can be anything. Where are you from? I'm from Sanford, Florida, Orlando, if you don't know it. And why did you move here to the Bay Area? I moved here for change. I moved here to be different, but in order to do that, like with the mind space that I was in, I uh, needed to physically be in a different environment. And California always seemed very interesting and entertaining in the way that I always hear about it and the way people talk about it. Since I was a little boy, I always said that I would eventually go to California. So when I left Florida, I decided that that was where I moved to. San Francisco just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It just seemed like where I was supposed to go. So I got my ticket for San Francisco when I moved. And when I moved here, I uh, never looked back. What inspires you in the art you make? What inspires me is feeling. Art is supposed to make you feel something, anything. And anything that makes me feel something, trigger something within me. Inspired me. And I have grown to know that inspiration can come from anyone, anything, any place, any object. It's all about your perception, how you think, how you it, them. what matters. What's next for you? What's next is just maintaining happiness when I can. <laughs> and just working on my clothing line and making sure that I build a strong foundation this year for myself and my brand. Loving myself and others. My energy is similar to the ocean. The ocean is sometimes calm, sometimes wild, it may be warm or cold, sometimes unforgiving, yet sometimes serene and peaceful. My name is Mariah. I'm a 19 year old artist who just recently moved to California. Femininity to me is basically just being. It's really the being energy, so it's just being present, um, being with your emotions, vulnerability. I embody feminine energy is by um, creativity is one of them. Um, you can dance, draw, yoga, meditation.
As a woman with feminine essence, feminine energy is ideally free to flow all throughout your body. How I connect to my feminine energy is I like being around people, especially like I have like a group that just really pushes me and connecting with others also helps me connect with my feminine energy, especially around like other strong women. So right now, I'm just really focusing on like my spiritual journey for right now and my art. You need to accept that every single part of you is okay. Every feeling you have is okay. I honor and respect every feeling I have. Make creativity a habit. Thank you to our youth and young adult for sharing their energy and self-expression through art. We truly appreciate your contributions and wish you all the best in, in your futures, in your careers, um, and achieving every goal and dream that you have set for yourself. Now we can't close out our 2021 RHY National Grantee Training without our next session, this powerful session from our closing keynote speaker. Please allow me to introduce the speaker, author, scholar, and founder of two organizations. As the CEO of Joy Unlimited and president of the Healing Justice Foundation, Dr. Joy, Joy Lewis helps individuals, institutions, and communities heal from oppression-induced historic and present-day trauma using healing justice as an on-ramp to reclaim our own humanity and each other. While she resides in St. Paul, Minnesota, her work is deeply informed by growing up in East St. Louis, Illinois. She has spent over 20 years in higher education, leadership as Dean, Vice President, Chief Diversity Officer, and faculty member. Dr. Joy's book, Healing, The Act of Radical Self-Care, educates individuals on the framework of the Orange Method of healing justice. Through coaching, certification, coaches, and training, Dr. Joy offers support to interrupt the historic cycles of oppression using both radical self-care and community care. She's on a mission to put healing in the hands of anyone, anywhere. Thank you, Dr. Joy, for joining us today to guide us from heartbreak to healing as you inspire, explore, and unpack the practice of radical self-care for emotional laborers. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Joy Lewis. Everything must change, nothing stays the same, everyone will change, nothing and no one goes unchanged. The young become the old, and mysteries do unfold. Cause that's the way of time. Nothing and no one goes unchanged. There are not many things in life you can be sure of, except the rain comes from the clouds, sunlights of the sky, hummingbirds to fly, winter turns to spring. Oh, 
wounded heart does heal but never much too soon you see nothing and no one goes unchanged there are not many things in life you can be sure of except rain comes from the clouds sun lights up the sky hummingbirds do fly except the rain comes from the clouds sun lights up the sky hummingbirds do fly from yelling to yoga y'all during this season i gave up my fear for fate created my own kind of fate built my own wall street started trading and bidding on things that would last in perpetuity i traded my bullhorn for breathing my kicking and screaming for live streaming of music <sighs> for my soul my rants for words with friends over tea as for me i became a yogi although i can't do a headstand yet you can bet i stand much taller and my head bows more quickly in humility you see i gave up titles and money and positions so i could listen more clearly to that still small voice that won't yell to get my attention did i mention that i learned that i can say much more when i'm not talking and how people can hear me much louder when I'm not yelling in their ear for fear that I won't be heard. It's absurd that I had to train the world to hear my voice by making a clear choice and step away from the chaos of systems of oppression produced. And remember, I am of great use to myself and community as a black woman who is well. So I added yoga to my yelling. Is that all right? Is that all right? Welcome, 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 welcome from heartbreak to healing, radical self-care for emotional laborers. I am so honored, so honored to get to be here with you all today. So honored to get to be here. You can go ahead to the next slide. Yes, from heartbreak to healing. You can go ahead to the next slide. So Sister Audrey Lord says, Caring for myself is not self-indulgent. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. Caring for myself is not self-indulgent. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. Y'all, I have some questions for you. So let me tell y'all right off from the jump. I'm going to tell you right from the jump, even though um, I uh, don't have the pleasure where we can like exactly talk exactly back and forth, we're going to open up the chat. We're going to chat back and forth with each other. Um, I have a co-conspirator, Diamond, who's going to uh, help me out and going to be feeding me some of the um, answers that y'all going to get to say with me. And uh, we're just going to interact. Is that all right? Is that all right? um so i got a question we talking about um going from uh heartbreak to healing and radical self-care so we talking about radical self-care y'all why would uh sister audrey lord say that self-care is how why would she put self-care and political warfare in the same sentence how is self-care political warfare what do y'all think so that's my first question so y'all i'm about some call and response so y'all gonna have to feed me and tell me why is self-care how is self-care about political warfare what do y'all think how is this about political warfare i'm gonna pause and give y'all an opportunity to tell me how is self-care about political warfare what do y'all think Let's see. I know it takes a little minute for the feed to come on. 
We need to be healthy to engage in change. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on through. What else? What else, y'all? What do you think? What do we need? What needs to happen? Why? What? And here's another way to think about it, too. How does the system win if we are not well? How does the system benefit? A system that was created to harm us is combated by caring for ourselves when you are, are, are the target of the harm. Y'all better come on through. Come on through. Yes. How does the system benefit if we're not well, y'all? What do you think? What do you think? The patriarchy benefits when we are held down. Y'all better come on through and preach a word. Come on. Come on. What do you think? How is the system benefiting if we are not well somebody said we turn on ourselves and we turn on each other the personal is political yes this is america somebody hmm huh y'all better give a word i'm just saying yes yes because we are the catalyst for transforming these systems of oppression if we are not okay then who will fight for change Yes. Y'all, I'm just saying. So Sister Audrey Lord said, this is not play play. You know, this isn't something cute. This isn't about like, see, they want us to think that self-care is this cute thing that we do over to the side. It's some extra, right? Self-preservation, the face of systems that are designed to crush you is incredibly radical. Y'all better speak a word today right? Self-care leads to change in ourselves so we can change the world. Yes. My co-conspirators are diving. It's typing so fast. Y'all give us some long, some good answers. Y'all, y'all, ooh, because if we don't care for ourselves and just work, 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 nose to the grindstone, we can stop to speak up and advocate for good progress. They win because we're silos when we're tired. Hey, somebody is talking about capitalism right they make us think that we got to buy all this stuff we got to buy this special cream y'all at some point i'm just gonna tell on myself i belong to like seven gyms y'all i'm for real for real for real. i didn't say i was going to all of the gyms but i did belong to like seven gyms because you know you got to go to one for, for yoga you got to go to one for plot you know you got to, i wasn't doing the stuff but you know i was belonging to them it's about refusing to remain held down by the oppressive system despite how difficult it can be to rise up I'm just telling you, right? The system is built for us to give up. Y'all better speak a word. But Audre Lorde said, caring for myself is not self-indulgent. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. It's one of the most important things you can do, right? Is to take care of yourself. So I'm going to share a quick story with you before we go on. So here's the business. I moved from... Minnesota, this was in 2007. I moved from Minnesota, where I live now, to Oakland, California. Where my where, where my Oak Town folks at? Oakland, California. Um to to Minnesota, right? I mean from from I moved from Minnesota to Oakland. So I arrived to um Oakland. I was at Mills College campus. Um I moved there to become dean of students. And I was living actually on campus. Um, and the phone rang unexpectedly, y'all. I get there and I, t I all I said was, I, I got there, I accepted this job. I told them, I said, look, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to this job. However, I wasn't starting the job. I said, I need two weeks. I need to just like get, my, get myself settled, find out where the grocery store is, find out, you know, where I'm gonna get my hair did, all that before I start. And they were like, cool, cool, cool. But then I get to my apartment, I'm there with my partner and I had walked into the office to get, get the key to the apartment. And you know how you can just feel something in your stomach, you feel something ain't right. And uh, I said, look, I'm so tired. They had lost my luggage. I was like, I don't have time. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go to the apartment. I go to the apartment. The phone rings unexpectedly. And it's one of my staff members, and she said, Dr. Joy, I know that you haven't started yet, but we didn't have anybody else to call. And I said, okay. And she said, um, 
I'm sorry to call you, but one of our students, and I'm going to tell you before I speak that this is a trigger warning. So this is a trigger warning. So one of our students has been murdered. I said, what? He said, one of our students has been murdered. I was like, oh my goodness. And she said, I said, here on campus? She said, no. Um, it actually happened in New York, but um, the student had their ID in their back pocket. And, uh, and so, and their parent, their mother was not around. And so we had to ID them and we don't have anybody else to call. I said, okay. And I needed to talk to the media and talk to the authorities and all this. Now, y'all look, I just arrived on campus. Why am I telling you this? So my whole idea about that I'm going to get there, I'm going to get settled, I'm going to do the things, I'm going to, you know, have a minute, I'm going to get to the grocery store, mm -mm, all that went out the window. And so why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this is because I moved there, that was in 2007. I knew that I needed to try to get my grounding. I knew there was going to be some business when I got on campus. I had no idea it was going to be that kind of business. I have been, um, for most of my my life, I have been um, severely overweight, about 100 and, 140 or 50 pounds overweight for most of my life. Um, and, you know, I was like, I'm going to move to California. I'm going to get my life, you know. Um, and this isn't about, like, you know, fat oppression, because that's a whole nother story. I, that's a whole nother. Y'all yeah, have to invite me back about that, because that's a whole nother, a whole nother topic that we can go down. Um, but the thing is, I had to shut it down, get it together, get in the mode of, of taking care of everybody else except me. And, um, I had to speak to the parents. I had to get everything in gear. I had to move through, right? Um, cause that's what we do. That's what we do. When we are emotional laborers, that's what we do. We just get in the mode. And I'm saying this is because when we do the work of emotional labor and we care about folks, we on the front line, we work with populations who people have forgotten about and who people are not thinking about, we have to already and always be doing this here, which is caring for ourselves. This is not self-indulgent it is self-preservation that's the act of political warfare because we never know when stuff is going to jump off y'all you understand what i'm saying you never know when stuff is going to jump off so we have to have something in our bank account i call it our emotional bank account stored up because you never know when there's going to be a withdrawal that's going to take we're going to come back to that all right you can go to the next slide how do we prioritize radical self-care overall, overall wellness, giving up your commitment to youth experience and homelessness while holding space for community healing from trauma as well as your own? Here's the, this is the question. This is our big question. How, how are you going to prioritize your radical self-care without giving up your commitment to youth who might be experiencing homelessness while holding space? for community healing from trauma as well as your own. That's what we're gonna be addressing today. Go ahead to the next slide. So who, who is this? Who is this woman talking to you? Who am I? So I am Dr. Joy Lewis. People finally call me Dr. Joy and I am on a mission y'all to put healing in the hands of anyone, anywhere. That's who I am. You can go to the next slide. So I have a process, it's called the orange method. It has four parts, meditation, which is about getting grounded, mindfulness, which is about getting present, emotional liberation, which is about getting free and conscious movement, which is about getting unstuck. So for today, we are gonna actually go through each of those practices, but here's the deal. Those practices, even though I have put them together in my book called Healing, The Act of Radical Self-Care, um, they don't belong to me. They belong to all of us. They belong to all of us. I just simply put them together 
um, in this book, but my, my work is about getting these practices out to all of us to remind us that they belong, they belong to all of us. They are, they are all, all, all practices, right? They belong to our elders and to our ancestors. They've been passed down. And I'm just here to remind us, yeah, we get to use these. We get to use these. You know, I didn't create meditation. It's been around for thousands of years, right? So you know what? We are going to practice together. We're going to practice together. Is that all right? Is that all right? So I am going to invite you right where you are. Um, we're going to do a little meditation together, some quiet time, whatever you want to call it, whatever it feels good to you. So I am going to um, invite you to come to a comfortable seat right where you are. Um, if it is available to you. Now, if you're driving, don't be doing the most, okay? I want you to be safe. Um, you can come to a comfortable seat. You can place your feet firmly on the ground. And go ahead and sit up like a dignified tree, y'all. Go ahead and sit up like a dignified tree. Yes. All right. And um, you can close your eyes if you like, or you can simply find a spot in which to put your gaze. And we're, we're going to meditate together for about a minute and 30 seconds. Okay. I invite you to just notice your breath. You don't have to do anything to alter it or change it, just notice that you have breath. We're going to take a deep, unifying breath together on the count of three. One, two, three. Deep breath in. Go ahead and let it out. Before you take this next breath, I wanna invite you to consider being completely pleased with yourself. Nothing to change, nothing to alter, simply please. On the count of three, one, two, three, deep breath in, and release. This next breath, let it be your biggest breath you've taken yet today. On the count of three, one, two, three, deep breath in, hold it, hold it, and release, go ahead and shake it out, shake it out, let your hands go up, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake all that out, shake it out, shake it out, and release, and find some stillness. You can go ahead and open your eyes. Go ahead and join us back. Great. Open your eyes. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So here's my question. It's my next question for you. What are the conditions that you feel like that you need in order to meditate. You can just throw it in the chat. What do you feel like you need? What are the conditions you feel like you need um, in order to meditate? You can throw it in the chat for me. What, what do you need in order to meditate? What y'all think? What do you need? What kinds of things that you need to meditate? I'll give you guys a minute to think on that. Throw it in the chat. 
peace and quiet. What else? What do y'all need? What are folks needing? What are the conditions you need to meditate? What do folks need? No interruptions. Soft music. What do folks need? What do you need to meditate? Focus, time, quiet. See a lot of quiet, soft music. (laughs) Bravery, mm, I haven't seen, that was great. Focus, quiet, no interruptions. I love that bravery, mm, the bravery to do it. Relaxation, privacy, safe space. This is great. Other thing, any any any, any other like big things that come, are coming up for folks? Quiet mind, darkness, relaxation. These are awesome. Focused on deadlines or next crisis, clear mind. Not focused on next deadlines. Yeah, just that. Just need to clear your mind. Just need to clear your mind. Just being, movement, solitude, intention. These are great. Thank you for these. So this is really awesome, right? Like, um, so here's something to consider. Oh, dim light, soft music, breathing. Y'all gotta set, y'all better set the mood for some, y'all better set the mood for meditation. All right. So um, this is really great when you can get this, but here's something to consider. It is not, what if I told you that it's not necessary for you to have these things in order to meditate? What if I told you that it's not necessary? for you to have these things in order to meditate, right? Because you know what y'all, my life not set up like this. Is this how y'all life set up? Quiet, relax, ain't nobody interrupting you. I would never meditate. Would y'all meditate? I would never meditate. Or maybe I need to move in with y'all because my life is not set up like that, right? One of my best ways to uh, that I like to teach meditation or hold space for meditation is in chaos because that's kind of how life is right it's a whole lot going on somebody needs something the kids need something the phone ringing email popping off something going on and you know what (laughs) we can teach our bodies and our minds um how to respond even when a whole lot is going on so you know what i have this quote that's hanging up on my wall. Y'all can't see it, but I'm going to read it for you. And it says, peace, it does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart, right? So it means that when all of those things are happening, that you can still be calm in your heart. You can still have peace even though all of that is happening. What y'all think about that, right? So I want you to do something. I want you to take your right hand and place it over your heart. Take your right hand and place it over your heart. Yeah. And just take a really deep breath. Right there. you will begin to feel your entire central nervous system calm down. This is called hand over heart meditation. Hand over heart meditation. Yes, hand over heart meditation. Okay. And you can add an affirmation. One of my favorite meditations, affirmation is called amazing awesome and brilliant amazing awesome and brilliant so you can add you got your hand over your heart and then i want you to repeat after me i am amazing i am awesome 
I am brilliant. Not me, you talking about yourself. I am amazing. I am awesome. I am brilliant, right? So you add that and what's happening is you are changing what's happening inside your head and you're sending a different message and you are getting your central nervous system to calm down, right? Now check this out. You are so powerful. You're so powerful that if you begin to do that practice on a just regular basis, your your, your eyes will start seeing your hand coming towards your heart and it will calm down before your hand even touches your heart. You hear what I'm saying? Before your hand even makes it there, right? That's how powerful you are. That's what kind of skills you got, right? And so I sent along a link actually that's a hand over heart meditation as a gift, as a free gift for you all. You can put it on your phone and you can do the hand over heart meditation. I like to do it, as I said before, um, the committee meeting starts in the morning. I don't know if y'all had a committee meeting at your house. So it's this committee meeting when it comes to, comes to my house in the morning. You know, they be trying to bring their friends and stuff like in the morning, you know, right when I wake up and they try to tell me this long laundry list of things that I got to do. Right. But I got some for them because I break out with the hand over heart meditation as soon as I wake up and I say, you are amazing. You are awesome. You are brilliant. They be like, Derek, she already busy. Right. So you can hit them with the hand over heart meditation. So I want you to know you can meditate anytime. You don't have to go off to a special retreat. You don't have to have it be quiet. You don't have to, that's lovely if those things can happen, but you can meditate at any time. You with me? You with me? If you with me, you can throw it in the chat. Got it. I'm with you. Yes. Give me some, give me some, right? Okay. You can go ahead to the next slide. Here's the business, y'all. I meditate. I burn candles. You know, I drink green tea and sometimes I still want to smack some people. Is it just me? Is it just me? Am I by myself? I'm going to tell them myself, y'all. You know what? It's because I'm human, right? And I have to still practice whenever I'm feeling some kind of way. And I realize that I still, you know, sometimes I still be wanting to smack people. Um, it's, It just tells me I need to spend a little bit more time meditating. I need to spend a little bit more time, right? because I still can feel some kind of way. So don't feel like if you've been meditating or you've been doing stuff, you'll be like, I'm not doing it right. It's not that you're not doing it right. It just means that you need a little bit more time. You need to spend a little bit more time practicing. You just feeling a little empty. So it's okay, keep at it. It's a practice, all right? You can go ahead to the next slide. Mindfulness, mindfulness. So y'all, uh, I don't know if I got to do I have some y'all when I was when I was uh, a little bit back in the day when I was in high school and when I was in college I was a baller I don't know if I got some ballers in the house y'all I can get some I wish I could get some high fives some people got some ball if I got some ballers in the house we could you know make our way I, I, I you know I never have like that much game in terms of like you know uh, I wasn't that great on offense but you weren't getting in the paint I'm just saying um however uh every once in a while you might get hit by the ball like get hit in your head or whatever and they would have to do a check-in with you you know and ask you some questions you know like what's today like how are you what's going on that really is a mindfulness practice right so i'm gonna show you and just ask some questions and you can just check in with yourself so sometimes i get into future tripping or I can um, get into some morbid reflection, right? I can get into some morbid reflection, right? Okay, I see some head raised. I can get into some morbid reflection, right? Um, but we wanna get into the present moment. So you can ask yourself and you can jot these questions down for yourself. So if you find yourself like, Dad, when is, when is this gonna happen? When I wonder about this, or when is this like pandemic gonna be over? When, you know, or dag, I regret that I didn't do X, Y, and Z. You can get yourself in the present moment by just asking some questions. So you can just check in with yourself. Now, yeah, this isn't a quiz. This isn't to make yourself feel bad. You don't have to be feeling some kind of way or whatever. 
um, you know. So check this out. So how many folks like got to uh, eat breakfast today? You know, you can just check in with yourself. How many folks got to uh, dance today? Was people didn't get, get they dance on? How many people got to sing today? Do I have some like a uh, shower uh, superstars, some folks who was like kicking it, you know, kicking it uh, uh, in their cars, right? Too bad we can't like have y'all be able to break out and open up your uh, microphones, right? Um, oh, and I understand there will be some dancing later on. So if you didn't get your dance on, there is an opportunity later, right? Um, how many people got to cry today? How many folks got to cry today? Y'all, and I ain't talking about like the cute cry, although that's nice. I'm talking about like the ugly cry, right? Like that ugly, you know, like the, you know, the snot type crying, that kind of like, cause I triple double dog dare you to cry like that and not feel better. Now here's the business. I am at Dr. Joy, D-R-J-O-I Lewis on all social media platforms. So. You can hit me up on Facebook. You can hit me up on um, Instagram. Um, I be kind of shady on LinkedIn, but I'm still on there. Um, so you can, we can do a challenge. So you can, you can like do the ugly cry, and I triple double dog dare you to do the ugly cry and not feel better. But I want receipts. So if you do the ugly cry and you don't, you ain't like feeling better or whatever, but I want receipts. I need to see you with the ugly cry. You need to take the picture and then you need to send it to me. Okay. So that's at Dr. Joy Lewis on all of the, all, all of the social media outlets. All right. So that's how you can get in the present moment. And sometimes what I do is I actually, um, I actually take the time to, uh, you know, really just like sit with it. And I'd be like, okay, what's my name? Okay, Joy Lewis. What do I have on? Okay, I got on this orange show. Where am I? I'm in St. Paul, Minnesota. Cause you know what? I'd be all up in January of 2022 and I need to bring myself into today, right? So I'm gonna share this piece with you about crying. So it says, when the tears won't stop, I just can't stop crying this morning. I feel overwhelmed with grief. Grief is so rude. It never announces itself or makes an appointment. It just barges in and interrupts your plans. It's like the train that ran through the hometown, through my hometown in East St. Louis in the morning, right when we were trying to get, get to school and my dad to work. It would just make a full stop. We would try to go around it and go over a few blocks but by the time we got there, it would be there blocking us again. So we had to stop, wait, feel our frustration. There was no way around, but eventually the train would start back up so we could cross the tracks. Well, that is what I'm doing now. I tried to go around, find other things to distract me from the grief of losing my dad, but I could not seem to get around it. As I sit here on the edge of my couch in my meditation room, surrounded by pictures of loved ones, grandparents, my mom and dad, and my spiritual guide, each of their obituaries, they are now ancestors. Tears are streaming down my face. I do feel some relief, some surrender, maybe even some peace. I am not yet on the other side of this grief. I do not know if I ever will be, but for now I'm stopping and breathing and crying. I am sure I took a mess. I look a mess and I feel like I am coming undone. But what I know is that I'm coming together, being more human. This is emotional liberation and I indeed am getting free. If you keep trying to go around your feelings, avoiding, looking for distractions, consider stopping, let the train back start back when it does you will get there but for now the most important place to be is in your heart you can go to the next slide the community a sacred community of staff providing direct services to runaway and 
um, youth experiencing homelessness. Shout out to everyone, y'all. Every one of you who is trans transcending a mindset, a mentality, a desire, a belief, a habit, an addiction, a behavior, a vibration that no longer serves them. Shout out, y'all. Shout out. I mean, it is no joke. So give yourself some love for that, okay? Go ahead to the next slide. There is power in the pause. There is power in the pause. Um, you know, just to always remember, um, you know, that we have that, that available um, to us, you know, to just see like how much um, that whenever, whenever a whole bunch is going on, just take that minute, just take that minute and know that, you know, there is power in the pause. There's power in the pause. Okay, go ahead to the next slide. Um, so you may have been wondering, how do I find time to pause? Will there ever be some relief? Is it really possible to lessen the impact of so much trauma that I'm going through? There is, there is. Go ahead to the next slide. Self-care, y'all, is political warfare. Just so we clear, this ain't play play. So go ahead to the next slide. But you cannot drink from an empty cup. You got to fill yourself up. You're worth it. Go ahead to the next slide. Imagine if deep breaths instead of fatigue became your default. Wouldn't that be the bomb? You were able to find more space in your day. You were able to get off the struggle bus. Y'all, we could jump off the struggle bus together, like for real, like for real. What if, what if that, what if we were able to get off the struggle bus? Go ahead to the next slide. Emotional liberation, y'all. So this is our third practice, emotional liberation. We're going to get into it. Go ahead to the next slide. It's also important um, to you right now. You may be experiencing some sleeplessness, depression, loss of appetite, or deepening addiction to substances that numb or numb the pain. Or maybe you might be worried about your people. You know, hey, I just want to normalize that if that is what's happening for you, you are not by yourself. Go ahead to the next slide. So, you know, notes from um, a, a, a trauma therapist, you know, it's just basically just letting us know that part of part of what you might be experiencing you know particularly at this time of um of of covid right that you know that is telling us hey that these types of situations they put us into alarm um and our sympathetic system is activated and our entire being wants to do something right um, there are huge amounts of energy that is being geared, that's gearing up inside of you, and we're ready to fight or to flee. And you're being asked to stay home sometimes, or it might feel like other situations when you have felt trapped. And you want to move through that energy and your agency and control. You need to move through your body. You need to connect with another being. So you know we're gonna work through it. Go to the next slide. You got to take care of your body because you know what? It's the only place that you have to live. You can go to the next slide. But here's the business. You are not required to set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. I'm going to say it loud for the people in the back. Make sure that you can hear. You are not required to set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. And if you are silent about your pain, they'll kill you and say you enjoyed it. That's my sister, Ancestor Zora Neil Hurston. Go ahead to the next slide. So what is the bridge that connects heartbreak and injustice with joy and liberation? It's radical self-care. And I've learned a few things. I want to pass it on, on to you. Go ahead. So here's the business. You can eat the kale. You can drink the alkaline water. You can take the supplements. You can do, you know, you can hit the gym. But if you don't deal with the stuff that's going on inside your heart, you know what? You still going to be unhealthy. So that ain't going to do it, y'all. We're going to have to do some other stuff. So go ahead to your next slide. So do y'all want the tea? Do you want the tea about um, how we can how we can work this out? Go ahead to the next slide. 
So if you do, go ahead and type, type yes. Uh, go ahead and type yes. So you want to hear about the Orange Method of Healing Justice and how of what I created and how we can um, we can get to it? I'm just going to assume yes. Okay, go on to the next slide. So here's the orange method I told y'all. Meditation, get grounded, mindfulness, get present, emotional liberation, get free and conscious movement, get unstuck. We are on emotional liberation and we about to get free, y'all. Go on to the next slide. So through the orange method of healing justice, you get, you know, it's a kind of clear ma a roadmap, a self-care system, grounded more deeply in social justice, sacred and supported space to keep commitments to yourself and community healing. Go ahead to the next slide. So y'all, we get ready to um, create an energy bank. So here's what I want you to do. You can take out your phone. Uh, go to your notes section, or you can have a little sheet of paper. You can write on back an envelope, whatever it is that's going to be helpful to you. Okay, we can really do do some things real quick. We can really create what I call your energy bank. You can go ahead to the next slide. Okay, so just like a bank account, right? Like if 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 I went outside right now and I had a a, a, a flat tire, God forbid. But if I had a flat tire and um, it was like, you know, every time, I don't know if this happened to y'all, but whenever, anytime I have ever had a flat tire in my life, they always tell me um, that, uh, you know, um, they always tell me that uh, we, that, that we'll have to, um, that we'll, that I'm, I'm going to need to have to, uh, that I'm going to need to have to get more than one, um, that I'm going to need to have to get more than one, one thing done. So, you know, I'll be like, how much is that going to cost? So whatever. So, um, I know how much that's going to cost me. So I want you to just know that we want to know how much these things are going to cost. Okay. Uh, so the thing is that I want you to have a sense about what kinds of things you will need to fill yourself up. So on your phone, I want you to think about, I want you to write down the first names, write down the first names of three people who, when you spend time with them, you feel energized, um, loved, and amazing. So write down three names of people when you, um, spend time with them they make you feel energized loved or amazing three people all right now i want you to write down three activities that when you engage in them you feel energized loved and amazing three things that when you do them you feel energized loved or amazing Okay, now write down three songs that when you feel when you when you hear them, they're your jams. When you when you when you uh, hear them, you feel energized, loved, or amazing. Okay, y'all, this last one. Three foods when you eat them. Now that means when you eat them, you feel energized. That means you like them and they like you back. All right. And then this next one, we're going to move quickly when these are your withdrawals. So write down the names of um, three people whenever you, when you're around them, you feel challenged, drained, or kind of irritated, right? And then the names of three activities when you do it, you're like, oh, I feel exhausted. I feel exhausted. Names of three sounds when you hear it, you feel a little sluggish. And names of three foods or meals that when you eat them, you feel sluggish. Okay. I take a picture of this slide so you have it, so you can come back to it on your own time. And then you can keep this. And this is a little energy bank. So when you're like, when I'm feeling some kind of way, you can come back to it. All right. 
So we we so we made it through all of them. We're going to end with a little dance and then you're going to get some time. We're going to get some time for questions just so we can dance it out. You moved uh, so we can move that um, that energy through. We're not going to get to dance only for just like maybe three minutes so I can leave some time for questions. All right. It has been my pleasure to get to spend this time with you moving from heartbreak to healing. We're going to bring up, you are going to see a person on the screen. You only pay attention to that person. As it says, if you want to fly, you can give up the stuff that weighs you down. You can move on. You can just keep moving. Yep. All the way to the dance. And we're going to get to that. So I can leave some time for questions. All right. Thank you guys. check out with one word awesome I can't hear you I apologize. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, I was saying thank you so much for that opportunity to dance. I know I really enjoyed it. I hope our audience enjoyed it. And I really found your presentation to be uplifting, authentic, and vulnerable. And I really appreciate it. Um, hello, everyone. I am Diamond Dumas, she, her pronouns. I am a training and capacity building associate at Youth Collaboratory. And you all have asked some really amazing questions to Dr. Joy, so I'm excited to pass those on and hear her response. So Dr. Joy, JJ Fisher asked, some of us have respiratory challenges. 
most every meditation I have come across has to do something focusing on breathing and breathing deeply, holding your breath, breathing out slowly. What ways can we make meditation more accessible to those that are not able to physically do breathing exercises? What a great question. Thanks so much, um, JJ, for that uh, question. Um, I would suggest, and I do um, a lot of um, uh, meditations that have to do with visualization. Um, that don't require, um, that, that are not so much focused on breath, um, that have to do more with a uh, visualization or, uh, if it is available to folks to also do, um, walking meditation or moving meditations, um, that are also a uh, ways in which to be able to, it's really more about just getting present. Um, and so that is also really, um, uh, really helpful. So I hope that that, um, that is something, and thank you for that. That is something I, I, I appreciate that question, JJ, and something for me, um, as a, as a practitioner to be more conscious about and to have more things that are more accessible. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Um, you have shared such powerful ways to be more present. How can we hold ourselves and one another accountable to put this into practice while engaging in such intense work environments? Yeah, um, thank you for the question. I like to think about it um, both for myself and for other people. I like to, to um, use... Uh, for myself, it helps me instead of like holding myself to accountability or others to think about it in a way of like, how do I inspire myself um, into accountability? Um, and how do I like make a commitment to myself and think about it as like, I get to do these things, right? Um, and so, so it's not like another thing that I gotta do, you know, or that I have to do or something else that's on my list, but, um, but more about uh, it's it's also like particularly thinking about it, even if I'm not doing it with somebody or if I get to do something, I kind of think about like taking on the attitude of um, young people, like really young people, like like children. You know, I think about like whenever I was a young person and I used to couldn't wait to get up to get get ready to go outside and play. You know, and it's like, can I, I get to do this? And so taking that on, like, this is something that I get to do, you know, um, and trying to take that attitude because um, then it's not like so arduous, right? It's like, oh, I get to do this, right? So how do we kind of reclaim um, these things as something that are like loving and kind to ourselves? Not like, oh, this is something I gotta, something else I gotta do. Right, because it is, it's a loving kind practice, yeah. Thank you for that. In our field, we use the term strength-based language and we normally apply it to youth and young adults. And so I appreciate this reframing and how we can use something that we do daily and put it back into ourselves with the practice that you're talking about. So can you please share a suggestion on how we could begin using the orange method in our organization with staff as well as youth and young adults that we serve? Absolutely. Um, so uh, as I as I shared that I want folks to um, to use this this methodology um, as as daily practice um, and uh, you know that whether it is in your um in your your staff meetings of taking a moment like at the beginning of just like incorporating like let's take a moment of pause right before we even start like let's just have a minute you might um you may you know uh have a minute of saying we're gonna start with a meditation we're gonna just put on a two minute thing before we start, because oftentimes we're like running from meeting to meetings. Like, can we get them in 
you know, before I just like jump into like the agenda is this, 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 can I like have a moment of pause or like get here? And it just becomes a thing that we do. Um, that, you know, that, that thing of mindfulness of like asking a question, like a kind of check-in question that could be like rotated through, um, emotional liberation. There's a practice that I love to be able to like share with you all where it's a, 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 a way of like listening for liberation, to be able to listen to each other and, um, share time, uh, and definitely incorporating some dance. You know what I mean? It's like, let's put on a song let's like get a little song a dance before we end you know everybody have a little song and rotate and dance it out like it just changes things um it just changes things and so it doesn't take a whole lot it can the whole the whole thing can take like 10 minutes right it doesn't have to take a long time but it begins to shift it's a cultural shift and a way of being of saying we're going to show up and incorporate as this is not something extra, but as a way, this is how we're going to be with ourselves and, um, and, and shift the way that we get to be, make things. Yeah. Just, just lighter. Thank you so much. Um, that kind of plays really well into the next question about what advice could you offer for specifically a woman of color who has been through homelessness and work with the homeless community to support clients in embracing mindfulness? Yeah, so I don't, I don't know that um, because, um, so I don't know that I could offer advice um, as because I haven't, um, I haven't uh, personally experienced homelessness. But what I what I can do is, um, I would say that uh, the wisdom that uh, that the person who has experienced um, homelessness to trust their experience, right? Um, and that mindfulness is a practice that they get to um, uh, couple with the experience that they have, right? And so mindfulness is simply a practice, right? And that it gets to be a complement to the experience that they have. They're actually the expert, right? Um, and that mindfulness is a practice that gets to be added on as a complement to the experience that they actually have. So they're actually the expert in that situation, not me. Um, but I can add to, to say, hey, here's a practice that you get to add to. And it's an intuitive thing that's going to help, help them to, um, to add to the expertise that they already have. Um, and that that's going to just be complementary to help them to be more uh, to be more practice um, and to just be more um, present to give more more support for themselves. But they're actually the expert in that situation. Thank you for that visibility. Oftentimes we tr tell youth that their experience is valid, but not only that they are the expert in that experience. So thank you for naming that and reiterating that, especially for youth and young adults with this lived expertise. Yeah. Um, on a different note, you encourage everyone to reach out to you if they have an ugly cry that they feel was unsuccessful. Um, for your ugly cries, what type of recommendations do you have for music, artists, specific songs that really get you in the space to be vulnerable with yourself? Oh, that's so good. Um, first of all, yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at, um, uh, I don't be know, I am so terrible at like remembering like what song, you know, like, like actual order artists and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not good at that, but genres, uh, of music. Right. So, um, you know, I'm old school, uh, R and B I'm old school, uh, like hip hop gospel. Um, you know, uh, in, in that way, I like, I like to just like sing, um, you know, acapella, you know, like in, in that kind of way. So, you know, I'm not good at being like, it was this. I'd be like, 
um, particularly like <laughs> I love keeping young people in my life. They be like, Dr. Joy, can you tell us? So I be like, I don't know, you know, I just start like, you know, singing. I like Lauren Hill. Uh, you know, I just like I'm I'm like um nostalgic in that in that sort of way. You know, I just sort of get, you know, like old school, old school rap and R and B. You know, I'm an 80s child. Um, I just kind of go back in that way. Thank you so much for sharing. A couple of those are on my playlist. So it's good to know that we have that connection in that way. Um, can you tell us what's next for you? What communities are you working with and what can they teach us in the youth services field? Yeah, that's really great. Um, what's what's next for me is I am I am a very very focused on um, building out capacity. As um, it's really not it's not like a, a slogan for me about how do I get healing in the hands of anyone anywhere. It's like that's not really just like some cute slogan. It's like I'm really like serious about it. And so how can I do that? I can't just do that by um, I can't do that by myself. So I'm really focused on um, uh, getting out the orange method through my um, coaching certification program of trying to get as many people trained um, in the orange method as possible. So when people go through my training, they're called OMIs um, because it is the uh, orange method. So I want to have as many OMIs as possible so folks can get out there and get to do the work. Um, I am uh, focused, uh, doing a lot of work, both, uh, I'm in, I'm in the Twin Cities in, in Minnesota. Um, and so both here and uh, across the nation, particularly um, with uh, the Black community and communities of color um, and Native communities of trying to just make sure that we are growing a population. So people who are the most affected by these policies and practices that are being made, particularly around the criminal justice system, that they are the folks who can actually um, be the ones to delivering services. Because the truth of the matter is whenever um, communities are being affected, there is no Red Cross that is coming for us, right? Nobody's coming for us. So my thing is like, we got to build our own Red Cross. So I am trying to make sure that we have um, folks who are in place to be there, to be able to offer and hold space. So that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you so much for sharing that. Are there any final words that you'd like to share with us before we pass it back over? You know, um, I always end with this. May the revolution be healing, y'all. May the revolution be healing. What a powerful statement. I want you to know that several people in the chat have described this session as powerful, energizing, inspiring, bringing joy, and especially perspective to our work. So I greatly appreciate all that you've done and all that you continue to do. I will pass it back to Dr. Sanzana Dean. Thank you. Again, I want to thank you, Dr. Joy, for that engaging, powerful, and inspiring keynote. I encourage all of our grantees and attendees today to think about how you can engage in self-care and to share these practices with youth and staff in your programs. I truly hope that you've enjoyed this year's training and want to again thank you and congratulate you um, for all the work that you're doing and for your unwavering commitment and support to serving runaway and homeless youth. Again, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed our training and I will now turn it over um, to RITAC to close us out. Thank you, Dr. Sanzan uh, Dean, for making those closing remarks. Wow, what an amazing week at the 2021 National Runaway and Homeless Youth Grantee Training. We did it again. 
second year of virtual national training, allowing even more providers, youth, partners to attend and connect through this virtual platform. What an amazing response, positive feedback from you all to make this event successful and a platform for you all to connect. This is the largest RIE grantee training ever. Being a virtual second year allowed even more providers, youth, and partners to connect. My name is Harpreet Gill, pronoun she, her. I'm the Assistant Director of Youth Housing Justice at Youth Collaboratory. As a part of my role, I'm the main point of contact for BiTech, the Runaway and Homeless Youth Training and Technical Assistance Center. Youth Collaboratory is on its second year of operating BiTech and participating with Chapin Hall. A lot of you already are probably familiar with Youth Collaboratory, but for those of you who are not, I want to share a quick introduction of what we're all about and how we can support you and how Right Tech can, um, can work with you moving forward. So Youth Collaboratory provides high quality, high regarded technical assistance. We have demonstrated a history of success at unearthing local innovations, elevating effective practices. We have broad understanding and deep connection to local providers and communities. We're thrilled to bring more FISB grantee into our partnership. Our multi-issue holistic approach reflects the diverse experience of youth and young adults and gives us the ability to make connections across issues, fields, networks, and federal programs. What you'll experience is authentic, collaborative, and relationship-based approach to our work. As we head into Thanksgiving week, I get the amazing opportunity to extend gratitude to everyone who has made this training successful. I want to extend tremendous gratitude to the entire Youth Collaboratory team, including our Youth Catalyst team consultants, for their hard work, for their attention to detail. I have gratitude for our federal partners, including our RIE program manager, Chris Holloway, our program project officer, Tiana Williams, and of course you, FISB grantees, national training participants, our speakers, exhibitors, and a huge shout out to the team at Catapult who helped us host over 80 sessions, including workshops, networking events, general sessions, regional meetings, and interactive expo and more. Thank you, Catapult team. Even though the training's over now, the learning doesn't stop here. We hope you will follow up on something new that you learned this week or a connection that you made with a colleague. And while it may feel like we're operating in a time of stress, I hope you also see the abundance of support you have around you. Call in on others on your team, young people in your programs, community leaders, and the staff at RITEC to help you keep learning, growing, and being responsive to emerging needs in your community. RITEC is here to support you with training and technical assistance. Our website has many available resources, and soon, recordings from national training will be posted in the learning e-learning system. Please stay tuned for more training opportunities in the new year. We also need your help. You know, you are the subject matter experts and we need you as staff, as young people and community leaders to help us design new resources that best meet the needs and realities in your communities. One way to inform our work is to completing evaluations and offering your feedback, which, uh, which informs our future TA topics, our events. Please complete the national training evaluation. You will find the link in the chat. In closing, again, Thank you to all 1,800 of you for making this a memorable and meaningful week of 2021 National Runaway and Homeless Youth Grantee Training. The energy, the participation has been amazing. So let's keep it going. Let's close it out with a special dance party. Take care, happy holidays, and thank you so much. Celebrate and dance so free. One more time, yeah. this got me feeling so free. We're gonna celebrate, celebrate and dance so free. One more time, yeah. this got me feeling so free. We're gonna celebrate, celebrate and dance so free. One more time, yeah. this got me feeling so free. We're gonna celebrate, celebrate and dance so free. One more time, yeah. this got me feeling so free. We're gonna celebrate, celebrate and dance. One more time, you just got the feeling so free. We're gonna celebrate, celebrate and dance so free. One more time.